was living on a caravan site, I think it was in Yorkshire. Mm. And, Not far uh, from here then. Yeah, <laughs> Barnard Castle actually. And um, I had a giant panda that some kids stole. And I just got a flashback memory of like crying on the steps of the caravan. Mm. <laughs> just weird stuff like that. Um, my younger sister was born in, York in Yorkshire. Um, but that's all I remember. Just like various baby trauma things. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, we moved around a lot. We moved yeah. every couple of years. My dad was in the army till I was nine. Mm -hmm. And then he never stopped moving because uh, he was an um, immigrant Irishman who'd never really settled here. So. Mm -hmm. He just went wherever the, the jobs were. Yeah. So we don't really come from anywhere. I mean, I remember the first time I ever heard our first single played on the radio, and it yeah. was it was John Peel, and mm -hmm. it was my birthday, and we went to this cheap restaurant that it was kind of like a cafe around the corner, and we asked them to put John Peel on because mm -hmm. we knew that he was going to play our single that night, and it was mind blowing, you know, to hear yourself on the radio. It was still a thrill. Mm -hmm. Even now, you know, we made um, we made a demo of I A M One R mm -hmm. in um, a, ho a home studio in Shepherd's Bush, and Paul Cook produced it. It's the first time we'd ever been in a studio. Yeah. And I did kick a cup of tea over the mixing desk, <laughs> and didn't realise that I just completely broke the entire desk, and right. they had to like unscrew a third the desk and remove it so <laughs> um, when we first started rehearsing when we were living in the sex pistol studio uh -huh. um, we had, didn't even know how to write songs then so we literally only had a couple of rehearsals and then somebody paid for a demo and that demo yep. was I own one R and then the fun boy three contacted us and the rest is history so we were thinking on our feet by mm -hmm. that time we by um, the time we did Venus, we were writing our own stuff, we had been throughout, but um, there were a couple of other songs that we used to rehearse in that studio, I Am When I, really saying something, and Venus, yeah. and I really wanted to do Venus still, so, and Dead or Alive had just brought out You Spin Me Around like a record, mm -hmm. and I loved that record, and I wanted to record Venus and make it sound like that, with that kind of production yeah. sound. Hence we went to Waterman, Stock and Aiken. And they had become real production line, factory production line producers and they regarded us as interchangeable with their stable of acts. Yeah. And kind of excluded us from much of the production process. Mm -hmm. And I didn't like that at all. I also didn't, uh, but Sarah and Karen were very happy with that. Yeah. It suited them down to the ground. It was, it was, uh, shiny, ultra pop, and very easy to do, mm -hmm. not demanding at all. And um, that's where they wanted to be. And I was feeling very jaded by the sort of vacuousness of, of, of the pop world. And I'd lost my connection to music and why I was obsessed with it in the first place and why I was, was doing it. And yeah. I just felt like I was that our band had turned into the sort of band that I never wanted to be in. Mm -hmm. The Smiths came out. I loved the Smiths. They reminded me of what everything that music had ever meant to me. Inspiring, personal, unique, original, exciting. And I, I wanted to make music like that. I remembered that that's what I wanted to do. Yeah. And I knew I couldn't do it in Bananarama. Mm -hmm. so. I adopted the name Shakespeare's sister in 88, before I'd ever met Marcy, mm -hmm. as the name under which I would record. And Siobhan Farr, he's the mother, the sister, the daughter. It's not the artist. Mm -hmm. The artist is Shakespeare's sister. And there is a cohesion to all four albums because I've got a very s strong identity throughout whatever stylistically and production wise I may um, or whoever I work with I think uh, there's, a, there's, there's a 
a personality and a character and a style which is Shakespeare's sister. Mm -hmm. oh. uh, I did start, um, I, that I have an idea for a film I'd really love to see made that hasn't been made yet and it's, mm -hmm. it's about a historical, very inspiring historical figure who was a woman and um, this very powerful warrior woman that the world doesn't know about and history's forgotten. And um, I went to see a psychic uh, when I was thinking of writing the script. Mm -hmm. I was thinking, Why isn't this a film? As soon as I found out about it, I must write the script and get it done. Mm -hmm. And I went to see the psychic, and the psychic said, uh, No, no, you're supposed to be writing a novel first. Write the novel first, and then the script will come. I went, OK. And I went home and started <laughs> writing a <laughs> historical novel. But there are a few about her in, in existence. Um, and I got three quarters of the way through the book and uh, kind of hit a brick wall with it. Mm -hmm. I shall return to that particular project at some point in the future, but um, I'm doing what I love doing most at the moment, which yeah. is playing live again. Yeah, I've started work on an acoustic album of, of the acoustic versions or alternative versions, lo-fi versions of the new album because they're great songs that um, stand up as songs mm -hmm. um, without uh, uh, a, a strong production hand on them. So I thought that would be a nice thing to do for the fans um, mm -hmm. and in between my touring commitments I would be continuing to add to that. I've actually started it with my son, Sam, who did some tracks in LA, started some tracks in LA with him. He's a very talented musician and writer. Yeah. So that was an amazing experience, working with your kids mm -hmm. that you gave birth to, you know, and there he is being this amazing talent anyway, and then actually co-creating with him. That was a really a wonderful experience, which I look forward to continuing when I get time. Mm -hmm. Describe Siobhan Fahey at this present time in just three words. Oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> no, sound bites. Oh, Sheffield Snooker City. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That'll do. <laughs> Great.